Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. Another week in the book for the Astros. In the books for the Astros. So, um, things looking pretty good. Should be an enjoyable podcast tonight as the Astros do take five of six. Uh, six game week uh, slate there. Usually four and two is the goal. Um, whenever you have a six game week, uh, but five and one, obviously, you'll take it. Uh, playing, of course, the Indians, who have struggled. I mean, they were sort of in the playoff hunt there for a while, and they fell off. We did sweep them back, of course, in Cleveland uh, a few weeks ago in a four-game set. So coming home, uh, we're just going to look for two or three there and then basically take out the trash, take care of business against the Rangers, which they did do. So two of three against Cleveland, taking uh, the series there and then sweeping the Rangers to go five and one. So, yeah, good week for the Astros. Obviously, uh, 61 and 39 is their record. So, 22 games over 500. Uh, increased their lead now to five and a half as Seattle, I believe, took three of four uh, in their four games set with Oakland. So, don't look now, but Seattle's right. Not they're seven back of us, of course, but they're, you know, looking at a possible wild card spot. So, Seattle, a surprise team. We play them starting this week, so uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So team that cannot be taken lightly. They're a pretty decent team. They've got some good players. Of course, Mitch Hanniger sort of their star of the team. But a lot of other people that, you know, have to definitely be aware of. So we'll dive into that a little bit. Um, but, you know, coming home, also important to play good baseball at home, which the Astros have done pretty good. I feel like they'd actually play a little bit better on the road this year. Uh, I don't know the exact home road splits uh, record-wise, but I would assume that their road record's probably a little bit better, probably probably close. I mean, they haven't played terrible at home. I just feel like they go on the road and they play better. That's just, you know, that's sort of the trend of the team, especially back in the... Yeah, there were, there were two very good years, which is 17 and 18. Both those years, they were a better road team by a pretty significant margin, if I remember correctly. They weren't a bad home team, but they were just, I mean, they, their, their offense seemed like it would come alive on the road. Um, I think it's a little bit closer this year in terms of home road splits. I just, yeah, it's hard to explain, but they <laughs> seem to play better on the road, uh, which is important this year, considering all the booing that's been going on. Of course, the league hates the Astros. But we'll dive into games here. I'm not going to go for that. So, well, obviously, Monday's game, not pretty, but they did get the win. Um, so Alvarez had a big two-run home run there in the fifth. That really opened the game. It was 2-1. to one. Uh, Granke pitched okay, I guess. He got the win. Uh, let's see exactly what Granke did here. So he went five and a third. He gave up two earned runs. Not great. Four strikeouts of walk. Um, but he did enough, basically. Javier got five outs, an inning and two thirds. He was sort of shaky. He gave up two hits. He walked a guy. Did strike out two, and it was scoreless, so that was good. Stanick comes in. Stanick can't seem to get on track. Like, he can't string together four or five scoreless outings. He always comes in, looks good one outing. Gives him a run his next. He's just sort of back and forth at this point. But he gave him an earned run. Uh, and his ERA is over 4. four it's 4.05 right now. So, And then Presley came in. He did walk a batter. Got a strikeout. And he got the save. 17th of the year. Uh, Presley's been as solid as it comes in terms of closers. Um, so, yeah. I mean, um, Alvarez had sort of the big hit in the game. The big two-run home run. Uh, but the Astros, you know, uh, bend but didn't break, basically, in this game is the way I'd sort of explain it. Uh, but, yeah, 4-3. to three. I'm trying to figure out whoever, whoever, who else scored runs here. So, Guriel and RBI double, which got them on the board. And Martin Maldonado actually had an RBI single, so something you don't usually expect. So I'm looking at the replays here. But, um, yeah, so the Astros... Uh, get the win. That was an important one to get, bouncing back after, of course, losing two of three in Chicago. Uh, the South Siders there. Um, good to come back home and, and get right back on track. Tuesday was the game where they were really never in doubt. They won this game 9-3, to three, I want to say. And they were up 9-0. to zero. It was 9 nothing at one point. So 
Three runs in the eighth. I believe that was Joe Smith's doing. Joe Smith just can't seem to get on track this year. Uh, ERA at 7.59. Uh, it's pretty bad for Joe Smith. He has not been what we had hoped going into this year. Dealt with an injury. Wasn't good before the injury. Hasn't really been good after the injury. Had about a three or four outing stretch where he didn't allow any runs. But he's yeah he's not gonna be a guy they use unless they absolutely have to in close games. So Brian Abreu, you're not a fan of. He came in actually gave up a hit, walked a guy, wasn't great, but did get through the inning scoreless. Uh, but Luis Garcia once again that I mean Luis Garcia has been great this year. So he cut the start here. Uh, goes six scoreless, strikes out eight, only gives up three hits, lowers the ERA to 2.86. So Luis Garcia just goes out there. He's been so consistent, seems like, all year. So Luis Garcia, man, he's been huge. Not a guy you sort of expected to stay in the rotation uh, going into this year because you just felt like, you know, he had injuries, of course, but you expected him to be more of a uh, bullpen guy or make spot starts here and there, but he's been too good um, to take out of the rotation. He's also been the one pitcher, I feel like, that stayed. Him and Granke, the only, only pitchers, I feel like, that have pitched the full year without any IL stints. But, um, yeah, he's been great. Uh, there's there's no two ways about it, obviously. Uh, the win-loss record, which is a statistic I don't really look at in terms of, I mean, win, win-losses are hard to, you know, uh, that, that, that you depend more on your offense and things like that. Um, I look at ERA, which also can be a misleading stat, but when it comes to ERA, that's sort of the big indicator for me, I feel like. Um, some people will disagree and say that's a misleading uh, stat as well. And I can see some merit in that, but I just feel like if I look at ERA, I mean, you know, it, it, there's a lot of other metrics People think whip, walks, hits, uh, walks, hits, any pitched is a better metric, which I can see that as well. Uh, there's FIP, fielding, independent pitching. I don't know exactly how all this is calculated, but like hard hit rate and things like that. Hit pro- there's a lot of metrics that go into really everything in baseball these days, analytics and everything. Uh, but just a very simple stat I like to look at when it comes to pitchers is ERA. So I've harped on that this year during these podcasts is because I just feel like that's a very simple stat that gives me a, a pretty good general idea of how good a pitcher is. So if you have an ERA under three, that's pretty good. Low threes is also pretty good. But uh, for bullpen pitchers, it's also tough because the ERA for bullpen pitchers can be more misleading, I think, than for starters because starters, you have a bigger, a, a bigger sample size. So you can take more... Of course, they pitch more innings. They have more opportunities to uh, lower an ERA. If you're a bullpen pitcher and you go out there and you, I mean, you give up three, four runs in one inning, that can balloon your ERA, and it takes you know five or six outings of scoreless ball to get it back down. So, um, I will say yes. I, I would agree that ERA for bullpen pitchers is sometimes an unfair way to judge them. So I will say that. But for starters, I think it's more reli- it's a more reliable um, indicator of how well someone's pitching. Just thought I'd throw that in there right now because I was actually listening to the broadcast today, and I believe Jake Odorizzi was the one who came on. I had an interview and thought that ERA was like the biggest, like misleading something you can't look at to judge a pitcher. So, but um, for starters, I think you can use ERA. Bullpen pitchers, maybe not, but. Just wanted to throw that in there. there. Uh, but, yeah, they get the win there. Uh, like I said, Wednesday's game, they led from the start. Uh, really was never in doubt. I mean, the three runs that you know, Joe Smith gave up. Um, yeah, he's been – he's had a rough go of it this year, to say the least. Um, as I go back here. Altuve hit two home runs. It was sort of his anniversary, his debut anniversary, like 10 years. Uh, 10 full years of baseball, but he's up to 22 home runs. Tucker hit his 16th, so Altuve had a big day there. Try to read this real quick if I can. 
but yeah, it was sort of his uh, anniversary, his debut anniversary, so 10 years ago on that date, which was July 20th, uh, 10 years of the Astros, so yeah. <laughs> And then they lose on Wednesday. This was a rough game. Lance McCullers, who didn't pitch particularly well in this game. Astros had the lead, but, you know, Brian Abreu really screwed Lance McCullers over. So McCullers pitches into the sixth. The Astros lead the game 2-1 to one at this point. And he loads the bases with nobody out. And Dusty goes to get him at... See how many pitches did he have here? How many pitches? Exactly a hundred pitches. So he goes out and he brings in Brian Abreu. I don't get it. Brian Abreu for some reason. Uh, Dusty uses him a lot more than he should. There's no business to use. Brian Abreu's proven he's not a great pitcher. Uh bullpen pitcher. Uh, it's just that simple. I mean all I hear from everybody, and I think I brought this up previously. Yes, he's got great stuff. He's got great stuff. Well, you know who else has the great stuff? You know, he Paredes. And what's he doing right now? He's pitching the minor leagues because he can't throw strikes in Major League Baseball. He can't do it. And he's proven he can't do it. And that's why he's in the minor leagues right now, which is where he belongs. Brian Abreu probably also belongs in the minor leagues where he can work on some stuff because he can't get through scoreless outings. He can't do it. He can't uh, strain inherited runners. He can't do a lot out of that bullpen. I do not trust Brian Abreu at all. He's proven that. ERA at 4.22, misleading as we just mentioned for bullpen pitchers. Uh, but he comes in, uh, obviously in a jam, so it's 2-1 to one at this point. I'm thinking, all right, if you can allow one run, get out of this with one run, uh, you will um, you would have done your job, basically. He gets two strikeouts, back-to-back -back strikeouts, so it looks like he's about to get out of it. And then he allows a no-name player to hit a basis-clearing double and a ball that was absolutely crushed. Ernie Clement is his name. Um, and that makes it 4-2 Cleveland. That was really the big blow in the game. But Brian Abreu, one thing I hate also is he got a strikeout, right? Second better, he struck out, and he, he like had a little fist pump. You don't fist pump when you still have a big out to get. I hate premature celebration. Nothing bothers me more than that. And I don't want to go off on a tirade here, but Brian Abreu, dude, he just... Well, Blown save, his fourth blown save of the year. It's probably been worse than that. The ERA at 4.22. That's not particularly good, but if you compare it to our bullpen pitchers, it's actually not that bad uh, when you compare it to some of our other bullpen pitchers. But, um, yeah, I mean, Brian, Brian O'Brien doesn't, doesn't deserve to really see any significant uh, close game action. He just, he's not that good. He's not, he's not, uh, he's not a setup guy. He's, he's a mid-reliever guy that you, you, you just pray and hope, but if, if, if I'm managing and I'm calling the shots, I put, I'm putting him back I'm putting him back in AAA and calling somebody else up that we haven't seen. I trust Andre Scrub more than I do Brian Abreu, but I'd put Brian Abreu right in that brooks Rayleigh category. Other than Rayleigh's little six-game stretch where he pitched very well, he's been pretty much bad every other start where he gives up runs. And a Brian Abreu, I mean... Yeah, he, he's just, yeah, I, I can't stand to see him in close games because there's just no faith there. Pruitt comes in. We're still sort of waiting on, on Austin Pruitt to see what we have there. He actually gave up a long home run off the facade of the second deck in right field, which actually ended up being the winning run, so he gets the loss. Blake Taylor gets an out after Pruitt got two outs. Stanick and Presley pitched the eighth and ninth. They both had scoreless outings. Uh, but we lose that 5-4, to four, uh, which was a tough one. But uh, especially going into the off day. You ain't, you ain't losing again going into the off day. But um, couldn't be too upset taking the series there. And then, yeah, rightfully so, the Astros swept the Rangers. So they actually are 8-0 against them at home this year. Wait, no. They're 9-0 against the Rangers at home this year. So... 0-3 in Arlington. Our next two series to wrap up the season series against the Rangers will be in Arlington, so those will be big tests when we get to that. But, yeah. Uh, winning Friday. Uh, I keep losing my spot here. 7-3. to 
Uh, Saturday and Sunday really didn't play their best baseball, but still got the wins four to one, three to one. Um, but yeah, Friday we had let's see here. We had Jake to Rizzi, who actually couldn't get through. The Astros scored five in the third, two in the fourth. They were up seven to nothing. And Oda Rizzi couldn't get the final out of the fifth. And they bring in Belak. Belak, who actually gets credited with the win, pitched very well, actually. Uh, don't really see that. Usually don't see Belak in games where they're leading. But he got, what do you get, seven outs, two and a third? Only gave him one hit, struck out one. But other than that, it was clean. He got the win because Odorizzi couldn't go to five. And then Blake Taylor got an inning, gave up a hit, walked a guy, struck out two. Blake Taylor, he's proved that last year's been, that was a fluke. And then Javier, who's been used a little bit more of late, uh, throws the ninth inning and gets two strikeouts. So Javier's a key part of our bullpen. Who needs to be used more in set up uh, situations, um, which I think Dusty will actually do. Seven to three there, Saturday four to one. Ashes actually took a no hitter into the eighth inning. Uh, Farmer Valdez once again was actually I mean didn't get, didn't give up any runs, so he lowered his ERA to under three, but the walks. When Fromber's not going well, usually it's the walks that, that's the big concern because he will allow a lot of walks, and he actually did that in this game, but didn't allow a hit as he walked four guys through six innings. No, he, he walked six guys, struck out four, didn't allow a hit, and ERA down to 2.97. Abreu comes in. He actually works a scoreless outing here. Um... But, yeah, I still don't trust Abreu. I think at this point, the uh, what was the score? It was 4 to nothing. Yeah, wait, no, 3 to nothing. So, if Abreu had screwed that up, I mean, that's just, yeah. Stanek comes in, uh, gives him a hit, but strikes out the side, lowers his ERA under 4, and then Presley comes in, gets the save, strikes out the side, but also allowed a home run. And he walked a guy, so it wasn't Presley's best outing, but didn't need to be perfect there. Um, ERA at 1.54 for Presley and a 4-1 to victory. And then today, game I actually didn't watch a lot of, had family friends over. so. Uh, but Abraham Toro, Eli White, I believe, hit a home run for the Rangers, which put them on the board 1-0. Um, their first lead in like more than 60 innings is the Rangers have really had a rough go of it. They've lost 12 in a row, and that's dating to back before the All-Star break. So they've been dreadful right, uh, lately. Uh, but Eli White actually gave them their first lead in, yeah, like over 60 innings. Abraham Toro get the runs right back, two-run shot for him. Again, he's just here until Bregman gets healthy. In fact, he might be sent, sent back down tomorrow. I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, Lemmes Diaz is, uh, will be activated tomorrow, so it'll either be him or Robel Garcia, but Garcia was here uh, when all of our guys were healthy, so it might be Toro as the odd, my, uh, odd, odd guy out there. Uh, and Kyle Tucker had an RBI single to make it 3-1. Um, Granky was pretty good in this game. He's been, you know, sort of... Uh, Granky hasn't, he hasn't been bad... He hasn't, it's hard to, I'm not upset with Granky. I feel like. Like, he's been okay. Like, I'm not super upset with him. But he had a pretty good outing today. I mean, he went six innings, uh, five hits, one earned run, uh, struck out four, walked two, ERA 3.48, which is reasonable. If it's under, you know, 3.50, you're doing pretty good. Ten and three on the year. Uh, so he's been good. Javier throws two innings. Strikes out two. He actually came in uh, into a bases loaded, no out jam, and got out of that. So, with like a, um, I want to say it was a strikeout and then a ground ball double play. And then Presley got the save as 18th, 1, 2, 3, 9th, struck out a guy, 1.50 ERA there. So, um, again, the Astros not playing their best baseball uh, offensively. 
um, in Saturday and Sunday, but still getting the wins. It is the Rangers. You needed to sweep that series. Anything less would have been a failure. So, uh, But, yeah, uh, looking good. Like I said, increased their, their, their lead in the division to five and a half games. So uh, not really in a lot, a whole lot of trouble. Uh, you'll, very pivotal road trip starting for the Astros now. As they'll, they'll go to Seattle for three, a team playing very good baseball. And then they'll go into San Francisco for three. Uh, best record in the league, that is, the San Francisco Giants. Uh, then you'll play the Dodgers for two. So that eight-game road trip, um, you know, you're looking at a, basically a five and three record. If you can do that, I think that's a successful trip, uh, which would be taking two or three in Seattle, two or three in San Francisco. And if you split with uh, uh, the um, Dodgers, I think you take it. So, which would yeah make it five and three there. Trying to think, obviously, I just mentioned Lemis Diaz will be activated off the IL tomorrow. I would assume Abraham Toro would be the one that gets optioned back to AAA. Uh, you're waiting on Bregman. This is taking a little longer than I expected. Actually, I don't know who who's uh, had the timetable here, but we were thinking, you know, a little bit after the All-Star break. Like, they had three games, obviously, in Chicago. I thought he'd be activated by the time they got home to play Cleveland, but it's been a week later. And he left today, I believe, to Oklahoma City to meet with the Skeeters to start his rehab assignment. So he needs a good number of at-bats. He'll probably play about five or six games in the minor leagues, I would assume. And if everything goes well there, then he'll be activated. But we'll wait another week, um, at least, I believe, on... Um, Alex Bregman before he's activated. Uh, so we're I'm trying to thank who would be the odd man out there because you have Robel Garcia, who he belongs in AAA. I don't know what they plan to necessarily do, but we should see Diaz in the lineup tomorrow. So that'll be nice to get him back and you know play short or third, pro probably third. They'll have Correa at short. Um, Correa, a guy we could talk about, has been just dreadful lately. Correa got off to sort of a slow start this year, hitting yeah, 240, 250, not doing a whole lot. Obviously, big spotlight on Correa this year with the whole contract uh, stuff going on. Did get a base hit today. He's hitting 268. That's just not good enough at the end of the day. It's just not. Um, yeah, it's not good enough. Yeah, so Correa's, yeah, he's he hasn't been very good this year. Uh, we've talked about Maldonado. I've been very upset with his performance as a hitter. I mean, dude, just get me to 200, please. Robel Garcia hitting 170 this year. Stroll's at 263. You'll take that. I'll take 250 from Stroll, to be quite honest with you. Guriel still, still, still got his average over 300. Tucker at 274. Alvarez, 283. I'd take that from Alvarez. If he can bop 30 home runs, drive in close to 100. Brantley, 326, professional hitter. Altuve, 275. So just the big disappointments. Correa, I would say. Um, of course, Toro, 208. Yeah, I mean, had the big home run today, but other than that, he's really not played very well. I actually got to start at first base today, which was pretty interesting. Um, and then moved to third later on is Guriel came in, I want to say. And then Robel Garcia. Yeah. Played third. Third today. Uh, I'm just looking at the lineup here. But, uh, yeah, so, all in all, I have to be happy with where the Astros are at, you know. I mean, obviously the prediction going into the year was between 88 to 92 wins. Uh, if they just play 500 ball, they'll, they'll get to 92 just fine. Uh, but you'd obviously expect them to play better than that. So looking more like at um, to get to 100 wins, they have to they have to go basically doing the math here. But with 61 wins, of course you need 39 more, and I believe it's 23 losses. So if you get 39 and 23, you'll actually get to 100 uh, wins this year, which I think is doable. Um, if we can get, you know, Bregman and Diaz back and healthy and keep everybody else off the IL, 
Uh, big trade deadline on Friday. I'll be definitely tuned into that all day. Astros need to acquire a reliever. Um, you know, at least one, two would be even better. Uh, but if you can get one quality reliever, I would definitely accept that. Uh, I don't think it'll be a big name guy. I just don't think the Astros really have the um, assets to do that. Uh, there's been talks about Max Scherzer. I think the Nationals, if they're smart, they'll be sellers at the deadline after getting swept by Baltimore this weekend. Uh, but they're eight games out of first place, and I, I don't see the Nationals competing. So if they're smart, they'll they'll dump some people and try to get you know a good package of prospects in return. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I can't even tell you all the teams because some some teams that you expect to be sellers will end up buying. So uh, I think the Rangers are going to end up uh, well not the Rangers but the Yankees will end up buying at the deadline. I mean they they need help in a lot of different areas pitching pitching wise. Um, as a priority for them, probably getting a starter or a reliever, because they're pitching right now is just a complete mess. They blew two games they should have won in Boston over the weekend, which is nothing new. I'll never feel bad for the Yankees ever, but man, they have had some heartbreaking losses this year where they've had leads and multiple runs in late innings, haven't been able to shut the door. They've 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 really had a rough go of it this year. But they're going to buy. They're not going to. They're not going to sell. They they feel like they have a legitimate shot in the wild card. And if they get things together and you know figure things out, and but they've had a lot of tough losses this year, where they've had multiple run leads in late innings. And you know you think about the Yankees, the strength of their team uh, for the last number of years has been their bullpen with people like you know Zach Britton and Aroldis Chapman and. You know, their bullpen had been good when we played them, which of course was a month or that the first time we played them, which was back in what late April. Was it late April? Something like that. They their bullpen was the best in baseball. I don't, but it certainly isn't anymore. I'll tell tell you that. But you know, Chad Green closing games, he can't get the job done. Rolls Chapman, they scared out of their mind to use him. Uh, Britain, I don't know if Britain's hurt or what the deal is there, but I feel like I haven't heard or seen. Britain would be the guy you'd move into the closer's role if you're not trusting a role as Chapman. So I would need a Yankees fan to die hard to actually walk me through their situation right now. But, um, yeah, uh, standings update for you. I told you the Astros, 60, of course. Uh, tied with the best record in the AL with the Red Sox. We're also 31 and so 61 and 39. Tampa Bay at 16 and 40. They had won five straight before losing today, so they creep back up. And then Chicago, the White Sox lost two or three to the Brewers, so they're 59 and 40. Um, big move so far this year. Obviously, I think I mentioned Jock Peterson to the Cubs. Um, not to the Cubs. Yeah, wait, to the Jock Peterson from the Cubs to the Braves. Yeah. But the uh, big, the other big signing, which happened on Friday, I want to say, is Thursday or Friday. Was I think it was Thursday? Nelson Cruz uh, to the um, Tampa Bay Rays. So they they added a big bat to their lineup. Um, and yeah, Minnesota's going to sell. They've they've been a huge disappointment this year. Minnesota last in their division at 42 and 58. But yeah, they're they're throwing in the towel in the year. And then the big move today, Adam Frazier from the Pirates traded over to San Diego. So uh, those are the three big moves so far. Uh, but there will be a lot more going this week, and especially on Friday. So it will be interesting to see what the Astros do. Uh, I have done trade deadline specials in the past. Obviously nothing last year with the 60-game season. But in 19, obviously the big Granky deal and getting you know Aaron Sanchez, Joe Biagini, Martin Maldonado, all that there. But I'll probably just wait to Sunday, and Sunday's podcast a week will probably be a little bit more lengthy uh, with the uh, deadline deals. I probably won't have every single one of them, but I'll go through the big ones as best as I possibly can. But yeah, I'll wrap things up there. Um, obviously, big road trip. Uh, they'll play. So I got a window that popped up there, but we'll play, of course, um, Seattle for three, and then San Francisco for three. The off day on Thursday, so. 
late night games I'll be up I'll be watching all of them of course um, but yeah I think 4-2 has got to be the goal 4-2 it's usually the goal 6 games so yeah uh, we'll talk to you next Sunday night and we'll see you then <laughs>